Greetings, everybody. Get your King James Bible, and we're going to do Jeremiah chapter 10, the commentary. This is Chaplain Bob Walker. Light of the World Ministries in John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Jeremiah chapter 10. Oh boy, this is going to be an interesting thing. Verse 1. All right, verse 1. Hear ye the word of the Lord. I'm sorry. Hear ye the word which the Lord speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. In other words, listen up, people. Verse 2. Thus saith the Lord, Learn not the way of the heathen. Don't do what the heathen do. All right, real plain and simple, right? Learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. For the heathen, heathen, are dismayed at them. You know, uh, I'm thinking astrology, right? Verse 3. For the customs of the people are vain. Vain is worthless. For the customs of the people are vain. For one cutteth a tree out of the forest, the work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. They deck it with silver and gold. They fasten it with nails and hammers that it move not. Hmm. What is this talking about? Is there a month of the year where people take a tree that's cut out of the forest and they deck it with silver and gold? They fasten it with nails and hammers that it doesn't move? Uh, let's see. How about the uh, end of December? Do people take trees and deck them with silver and gold? What does deck means? Well, it means, that's where you get the word, decorate. How's that song go? Deck the halls with boughs of holly. Fa la 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 la, la 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 la. Yeah, I know. Don't, uh, don't quit your day job, Bob, because you, uh, you ain't going to have no singing career. I know. What is that, uh, you know, deck the halls with boughs of holly? Oh, yeah. See, they were celebrating Christmas. Well, maybe maybe not Israel, but uh, there were heathens celebrating Christmas in Jeremiah long before Christ was ever born. They cut a tree. They decorate it with silver and gold. And why do they deck the halls with boughs of holly? Holly was the wood that witches would use for their magic wand. Harry Potter, anyone? And why is it called hollywood? Uh, why not oak or maple or pine? Why holly? Huh. You know, the Bible says, don't learn the way of the heathen. Don't do it. You know, I've been to, uh, I've gone to churches in December and see there's a nice big tree in there. Uh, I don't know what you call it. It's not really a living room, but the entrance. And I'm like, what the? 
and I just turn around and walk out. I mean, you know, seriously. Learn not the way of the heathen. And be not dismayed at the signs of of the of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. For the customs of the people are vain, for one cutteth a tree out of the forest, the work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. They deck it with silver and gold. Yeah, they decorate it with silver and gold. They fasten it with nails and with hammers that it move not. Huh. And I hear all kinds of people say, well, you know, we don't worship the tree, so it's okay to do it. Really, the Lord says to, to pay attention, listen, to listen to him. Don't do it. You know, people that uh, explain things the way that the Bible says to do, they deserve what they get. They really do. Verse 5. They are upright as the palm tree, but speak not. They must needs be born, because they cannot go. Yeah, these trees, they can't speak. They can't walk. You got to, you know, born. You got to bear them up on, you know, you got to carry them. It says, be not afraid of them, for they cannot do evil. Neither also is it in them to do good. Well, if it's no good, why have it? Verse 6, Forasmuch as there is none like unto thee, O Lord, thou art great, and thy name is great in might. Who would not fear thee, O King of nations? For to thee doth it appertain, forasmuch as among all the wise men of the nations and in all their kingdoms, there is none like unto thee. But they are altogether brutish and foolish. The stock is a doctrine of vanities. Silver spread into plates is brought from Tarshish. Now Tarshish is an old name for Spain. And yes, there were silver mines in Spain. Silver spread into plates is brought from Tarshish and gold from Upaz. The work of the workmen and of the hands of the founder, blue and purple is their clothing. They are all the work of cunning men. Uh, purple has always been a color of royalty. Verse 10. But the Lord is the true God. He is the living God and an everlasting king. At his wrath, the earth shall tremble, and the nations shall not be able to abide his indignation. Hey, uh, what is indignation? Uh, that's extreme hatred. Extreme hatred. Indignation. That's one of those $20 or 20 pound uh King's words, you know, from the UK. Thus shall you say unto them, The gods that have not made the heavens and the earth, even they shall perish from the earth and from under these heavens. What gods are those? Uh, the gods that have not made the heavens and the earth? What gods? Well, the gods are the fallen angels. And God's going to put the good people on his right hand and the bad on the left. And did you know that hell was created for the devil and his angels? Did you know that? Matthew 25, verse 40. And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, 
prepared for the devil and his angels. You see, hell was created for the devil and his angels. Originally, man was, you know, we weren't supposed to go there. Wasn't prepared for us. All right, so. Verse 11, chapter 10, Jeremiah. Thus shall you say unto them, The gods that have not made the heavens and the earth, even they shall perish from the earth and from under these heavens. Verse 12, and speaking of the Lord of heaven, He hath made the earth by his power. He hath established the world by his wisdom and hath stretched out the heavens by his discretion. When he uttereth his voice, there is a multitude of waters in the heavens, and he causeth the vapors to ascend from the ends of the earth. He maketh lightnings with rain, and bringeth forth the wind out of his treasures. Every man is brutish in his knowledge. Every founder is confounded by the graven image. You know, I think, honestly, I think, uh, you really, you think about it. I, I consider television a graven image. I mean, people almost worship some of these celebrities and you know, if it's on the television, they absolutely believe it. Well, I saw it on CNN, so, you know, it's, yeah. Every founder is confounded by the graven image. For his molted, molten image is falsehood, and there is no breath in them. You know, they would melt down metal and pour it into the mold. Once it cooled, it was, you know, uh, an idol. But there's no breath in them. They're not breathing. They don't eat. They don't talk. Verse 15. They are vanity. And the works of, and the work of errors. In the time of their visitation... They shall perish. The portion of Jacob, now remember, Jacob's name was changed to Israel. The portion of Jacob is not like them, for he is the former of all things, and Israel is the rod of his inheritance. The Lord of hosts is his name. Gather up thy wares out of the land, O inhabitant of the fortress. What are wares? Just things. You've heard of a warehouse? Well, you know, that's just a house where they store all their things. Cookware? Yeah, cooking things, right? Verse 18, For thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will sling out the inhabitants of the land at this once, and will distress them, that they may find it so. Woe is me for my hurt. My wound is grievous, but I say truly, this is a grief, and I must bear it. Verse 20, My tabernacle is spoiled. And all my cords are broken. My children are gone forth of me, and they are not. There is none to stretch forth my tent any more, and to set up my curtains. For the pastors, P A S T O R S, you know, think of TBN, 700 Club. For the pastors are become brutish, and have not sought the Lord. Nope, they sought money. Creflo, send me many a dollar. 
For the pastors are become brutish they, and have not sought the Lord. Therefore they shall not prosper, and all their flocks shall be scattered. Behold, the noise of the brute is come, and a great commotion out of the north country, to make the cities of Judah desolate, and a den of dragons. If you want to know what the dragon dragons are, well, go to Revelation chapter 12. It says uh, the great dragon, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, and a third of the angels followed Satan in the rebellion. You know, he tried to kill God. Not a very good game plan, if you ask me. But, uh, hey, what do I know? Verse 23. O Lord, I know that the way of a man is not in himself. It is not in man that walketh to direct his steps. Who directs the man's steps? The Lord. Or the devil, I guess. You know, think about it. How about Psalms 37, verse 23? The steps, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. See, God's people, their steps are ordered by the Lord. Believe it or not. Jeremiah 10, 23. O Lord, I know that the way of a man is not in himself. It is not in man that walketh to direct his steps. O Lord, correct me, but with judgment, not in thine anger, lest thou bring me to nothing. See, there's a big difference between judgment and wrath. And that's what wrath is anger, period. God's people are going to appear before the judgment seat of Christ, where they're going to either be given a reward or walk away virtually empty. But that's another study altogether. And then you've got the white throne judgment, where God's wrath is poured out upon those that hate him. O Lord, correct me, but with judgment, not in thine anger, lest thou bring me to nothing. Pour out thy fury upon the heathen that know thee not, and upon the families that call not on thy name. For they have eaten up Jacob, and devoured him, and consumed him, and have made his habitation desolate. Yeah, if you're a believer, you definitely want to appear before the judgment seat of Christ, where you'll be shown mercy. But uh, those that appear before the great white throne judgment, uh, that's a problem for them. Anyways, let's take a look at 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 9. For we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry. Ye are God's building. According to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. 
Now, if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire. And the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide, which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. Huh. Now, gold, silver, and precious stones, they don't burn. But wood, hay, and stubble? Oh yeah, that burns. So, when it's revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide which he have built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. So, if you build and the fire burns up all your worthless works and you've got something left over, you're going to get a reward. Verse 15. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss. But he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. I would sure hate to be in the kingdom with no reward at all. Zero. So here it says that they'll be saved, but they're going to suffer loss. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? Think about that when they, uh, you know who's want to build their little temple over there in the Middle East. As a rejection of what Christ did on the cross. And there's a lot of people in it that attend a business that has the name church in it. That wants to help them in their endeavor to do this. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. Let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seemeth to be wise in this world, let him become a fool, that he may be wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolish with, foolishness with God. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. Yeah, if you went to a university and got a PhD, a doctorate degree, which is eight years of college, and you were an expert on evolution, this would apply. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God, for it is written, He taketh the wise in their own craftiness. And again, the Lord knoweth the thoughts of the wise, that they are vain, worthless. Therefore, let no man glory in men, for all things are yours, whether Paul or Apollos, or Cephas, or the world, or life, or death, or things present, or things to come, all are yours, and ye are Christ's, and Christ is God's. Oh yeah. So, keep Jeremiah 10 in mind uh, next December when you get ready to put up a tree in your house. I don't think I've had a tree in my house and around 30 years you know and it's amazing people have a thousand reasons well maybe not a thousand but yeah i'm i'm stretching it there but they always have a list of reasons well you know we don't worship the tree and we we don't you know eh. hey god tells you not to do something it's a good idea to listen you know, our reasons and his reasons are different. And just remember, all the witches would uh, 
Where did they worship? The groves. Groves of trees, especially those sacred oaks. Yeah. Why do witches do their little deeds in the groves of trees on every high place on the high mountains? You know, why did they build the pyramids? And why do the pyramids not have a the top? I mean, it's always uh, got the flat spot on the top. I guess that's so that they can go up on the top and uh, do their little ceremonies or worship service or, or whatever they do. I don't know. I don't think the uh, pyramids that they built were in honor of the Lord. I mean, they got pyramids all over the world. Believe it or not, the largest pyramid in the world, everybody says, oh, Egypt, Egypt. Nope. China, from what I understand. It's out in a the desert there. Matter of fact, it wasn't even uh, rediscovered until World War II. They were supplying, uh, uh, flying some, um, I think, DC-3s. An incredible aircraft, by the way. It was a cargo plane. You know, really useful to haul bullets and food for your troops and, you know, whatever. They were flying over the desert in China. And they saw this huge pyramid. Well, sadly... Uh, I think it was 1940, the, World War II ended in 45. Either 47 or 48, the communists took over China and they wouldn't let anybody look at the pyramid. But there's pyramids all over the place. Do you know in Illinois they got pyramids? Oh yeah, I think they're dirt. Um, they got, you know, everybody knows about Egypt. But you know there's pyramids down in uh so, uh, Mexico and Central America and South America. You think they were making those for uh, honor of the God of the Bible? I don't think so. I think they're for the other guys, but hey, what do I know? So, something to consider. But yeah, the... Uh, They've, they've discovered all kinds of lost cities down in South America, out in the jungles. A lot of it with uh, Google Earth, believe it or not, and the satellites. You know? Jungle uh, will reclaim all that stuff, but uh, yeah. I imagine the Lord... Uh, I wonder if those cities were there prior to the flood and then destroyed. I don't know. I don't know. I wonder. All I know is there was some very advanced technology on this earth thousands of years ago. And I think the, uh, <laughs> the flood was the great reset. Uh, God's great reset. Now they want to do man's great reset. So, yeah, if you got money in the bank, you're going to lose it. And if you survive, they will uh, cancel all your debts. But don't expect to be able to live in your house. No, they got a place for you if you survive. Thing is, they don't need us anymore. They got driverless cars and trucks, uh, you know, warehouse workers, autonomous warehouse workers. Uh, they can stock and load and unload and move things around and farm equipment and everything else. They, they don't need people really anymore. They got the technology now to do all that stuff. So... They're going to rewild the world. God said, be fruitful and multiply. And the devil says, we need to depopulate the world. 
Hmm. You know, when I started studying Satanism, didn't take me long to figure out that everything the Bible says, they say the opposite. If the Bible says, thou shalt not, Satanists say, do what thou wilt. If it feels good, do it. You know? And if the Bible says to do something, they say don't. If you ever want to know what side of an issue the Bible's on, turn on your TV, find out what the position their position is on something, and do the opposite. You'll be right with God, almost without exception, to my knowledge. Believe it or not, that I have found that to be true. The Bible says, be ye separate. The media says, open borders. We're all one world citizens. But the Bible says to be ye separate. Learn not the way of the heathen. So, what can I tell you? All righty. All blessing, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' precious name. Amen.